As you have learned to subtract two digit numbers by lining them up vertically, you have probably run into some problems like this. We've got the instruction to subtract 53 minus 37. So we line our two numbers up vertically and we know that we start by subtracting the digits in the ones place. So I come over here and I see that in my ones column I have 3 minus 7 and I realize that I have a problem. I cannot subtract 7 from 3 and get a positive number and I know that I cannot put a negative number in my ones place in an answer like this. And so to solve this problem, we need to do something called borrowing. So let's take a look at what borrowing involves. I would begin by looking at my 53 in a little different way. And so I've got 53, which is my top number here, and I'm going to look at it as five tens and three ones. And so I've drawn a little example here. Each of these bars that I have here are a little, a little difficult to see because I've drawn them real small, but what I have in each of these bars is 10 little squares. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 little squares make up a bar of 10. So for the 50 part of my 53, I can think of this as having five tens. So I've got one, two, three, four, five sets of 10 to represent my 50. And then the three I can think of as three ones. And so what we need to do when we borrow is that we're going to borrow one of our 10 bars here and we're going to move it over into the ones space. And so I'm going to take this 10, this set of 10, and I'm going to erase it from the 10 section and I'm going to move it over or borrow the 10, and I'm going to now put it in my one section. And so what I'm going to do is, is count out 10 ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I just borrowed 10 squares essentially from the tens section, and I moved them over to the ones section. And so now, instead of having five tens and three ones, watch this. I now have four tens, one, two, three, four. And instead of three ones, I now have 13 ones. I have 13 little squares over here now because I borrowed 10 and added it to the three. And so I have the same total number of squares in my problem, but I've just rearranged them so that I can do the subtraction. So now I'm going to rewrite my problem here of 53 minus 37. And, and seeing what we've done here visually with the little squares, I can do in my problem here with just my numbers. So I can see here that in the ones column, I am now going to have 13 ones instead of three. And in the tens column, instead of having five tens, I now have four tens. So this here becomes my new problem. Instead of 53 minus 37, I've rearranged it, and now I've got a four instead of a five in my tens column, and I have 13 ones to work with now. So now I'm in good shape to do my subtraction. 13 minus seven, I have a positive answer of six.
And so I can go right below my set, my 13 and my 7 here, and put my answer of 6. 13 minus 7 equals 6. And then I move over to my tens column, and I simply do my subtraction here. 4 minus 3 equals 1. And so you can see that once we've rearranged and we've borrowed from the tens place, it really becomes a very simple subtraction problem. 13 minus 7 equals 6, and 4 minus 3 equals 1. And so I now have my solution of 16. 53 minus 37 equals 16. Let's look at another problem of subtracting where we're required to do some borrowing from our tens place in order to subtract the digits in our ones place. So the problem we have here is asking us to subtract 13 minus 7. So we're going to go ahead and set this problem up in the same way that we set up our two-digit subtraction problems, but in this case we have a two-digit um, number, 13, and we're subtracting a one-digit number from it, 7. So we want to make sure that we line up, we always have to line up our numbers that are in the ones column together and any numbers in the tens column together as well. In this case, since we have a two-digit number and then we're subtracting a one-digit number, just to help us keep organized, we can put a zero before the seven, and that will just kind of help us hold its place. Zero, seven is the same value as seven, and this makes it look, look a little bit more organized with a two-digit number and a two-digit number. So let's begin again by uh, subtracting the digits in our ones place. So we look over here and we see that we have three minus seven. But our problem is that we can't take 7 away from 3. There's not enough. There's not enough uh, numbers here to take 7 away. And we know that we can't put a negative number in our ones place in an answer like this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work on some borrowing again. So let's look at our 13. And instead of just having it be the number 13, we're going to break it up a little bit. And so we're going to look at this 1 here. So I'm going to draw a little line between my 1 and my 3, representing that this is my 1's column and that this is my 10's column. So in my 10's column, I have 1, 10. So let's make a little 10 bar here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So here I've got, in my, in my tens column, 1, 10. And in my ones column, or in my ones place, I have three ones. So I'll draw these separated because they're just ones. This one's all together because it's representing a 10. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow this 1, 10 from my tens column and I'm going to move it over into my ones column. And so over here, I now am going to have, um, I now I'm gonna have 10 separate little ones. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I, I've taken this 10 from here and I've borrowed it and I've moved it over into my ones column. So I still have the same number of squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I still have the same number of squares, but instead of thinking of it as 1, 10, and 3, 1s, I now think of it as no 10s and 13 ones. So I now have 13 ones to take 7 away from. So if I were to rewrite the problem here, I would borrow 1 from this tens place and make this a 0, 
and in my ones column, I'm gonna make this three a 13. And so now looking at my ones column, I know that 13 minus seven is six, and I put my answer here. And in the tens column, I've got zero minus zero, which is just zero, and I could, I could write it, but I don't need to. And so I can just leave my answer here as six. So subtract 13 minus seven, and the answer is six. Understanding this concept of borrowing is very important, and it's very important that you practice a lot of problems in which you need to practice borrowing.